It's windy. It is windy. We'll do some brakes. So we've got a few bolts on the back here. We're just gonna crack loose. Get off these little covers. And that reveals the space for a H7. Get that in there. Never really be that tight. Okay, that's fine. We'll leave that there for now. Then we've got these two 15s that we need to undo. Uh, we're going to leave those for now as well. I just wanted to start loosening a few things up so it helps the caliper slide a little more easily. Now we need to rewind the caliper. Okay, it's rewind time. spring from the front first just rewinding a little bit but not as easily as I would like Tight. That's still got a fair way to go in yet. Yeah? That's not nearly close. Okay. We'll rewind that the rest of the way when it's off. Should be easy to remove now. I'm just going to pop out this clip. There we go. Pull that, that bit there. Tucks in a groove down here. Remember that when you go to put it back together. You'll be fighting it for a long time. Go. That is off. Loosens up our caliper a little bit. Now we'll remove the two H7s from the back and then this whole caliper will come off the bracket. Never use an impact gun to break these things loose. Definitely regret it. And there we go. Get both of our slide pins out, ready to clean those up. Get our old brake pad out as well, over here. <laughs> and now, in the caliper up here, what we'll do, that bit the rest of the way back in. that a good clean out before we reassemble. She quite badly pitted it in there. But 
we're not replacing canopers today, just discs and pads. We'll obviously give all this a good clean up, all in here and everything, and uh, do our best to get it reassembled super clean. So this one here just needs a little more persuasion to wind that last bit in. So now I want to get these two 15s off here at the back. I'm not sure we're going to get the impact gun in on this. Nope, not on the top one. So that can be a good way to start breaking bolts loose if you don't have a uh, a big bar. I do have a few actually, but when you get really tight bolts like that, I don't want to know. Sometimes that's what it takes. It's just that impacting motion before it starts to come loose. There we go. Now, before we move this all the way, just make a note of the orientation of this bar. There's two individual pieces here. There's the bracket that holds the brake pads, and then there's this little, uh, I think it's the bump stop for the steering, and it bolts onto the back, so it will, it will contact here when you reach full steering and lock. So let's just whip this out. remove got the old brutal red lock tight on i don't know if it comes out from factory i'm not an expert on these um, d5s if somebody else out there knows leave a comment Ta -da! now we need to do is just remove this brake disc and then we can start cleaning up and refitting oh sometimes we win if it doesn't come off easily hit it from here with a hammer as hard as you can and then once it just you know can hit it and then you just spin the hub hit it again spin the hub and you just keep doing that until eventually the brake disc comes off don't be afraid to get brutal with it if you need to it's all the rust and stuff that gets stuck in there that causes the rust lip it actually looks like this has been cleaned up at some point relatively recently so we're happy for that at least we didn't have to fight with it start by cleaning up this bracket it's actually not bad at all not for where we live just clean up some of the loose the loose stuff clean you can keep filing it back until you get back to totally clean metal um, but because these don't have shims and this car's from 2005 it's already quite old so this has probably been done a few times already I don't want to take off too much because um, it can make the brake pads like rattle and stuff like that so I'm gonna stop there and uh, I'm pretty confident that that will be a hundred percent fine be kind of ashamed to put on new brakes and everything and leave all that rubbish in there, wouldn't it? Just 
eight newton meters this, so. Eight newton meters is basically just nipped up. I'm not gonna get out a torque wrench to do this bolt, but it's basically just like, that do. And it's almost like just once it starts to feel snug, you just go just a tiny touch further. And that's that done. It all does is hold the disc in place for assembly. Once the wheel's bolted up, the wheel holds the disc on, so it's not imperative. Even if you snap that bolt off, you don't need it. You'll be fine. I'm gonna try to take off some of these chunky bits on the face of the piston. And also do the same on the ears of the caliper as well here. may look rusty still but like I said it's kind of difficult to get rid of every single trace of rust when something's as rusty as this but it still works okay so we'll reuse it could go mad just like replacing all the calipers and everything but sometimes you don't have to spend the money put some on the back of the caliper ears as well here a bit of grease Good. So I just want to put a little bit of grease on these, not loads. All it will do is collect dust and debris, but without it, it'll make an awful racket and dirt will get stuck there anyway. And without the grease, it will just pinch and then you get stuck pads. So just going to work the grease into the corners. And now we can go ahead and bolt this back up to the car. to try and remember the orientation of stuff when you come to fit back together including the orientation of that little bump stop So I don't mind nipping those up with the gun. They're going to be pretty tight anyway. Now we can fit our pads. So before we put this one here, we'll just put a little bit of grease around uh, just these little parts here. But make sure your gloves are nice and clean because you might have to press on the face of the pad. And you don't want to get grease on it when you push it into the caliper. Now we can just drop in our pad on this side here and then we can drop our caliper down over the top, easy peasy. So I strongly recommend using a, a grease that is friendly with rubber. Obviously before you grease them you also want to give these a clean up as well. Okay, just nip those up. And then we'll talk these down. Yeah, pretty much almost there. These aren't very tight, so I was surprised how tight they were when we were taking it apart. There we go. Happy days. And then put the two little rubber boots thing. Well, they're end caps really, aren't they? Put those on the end, stop any dirt from getting in there. Now we need to put the spring back on the front. Oh, I hate these springs. They can be tough. I'm not gonna lie. Oh, come on. Okay. Top 
one in. Try for the bottom one. Might be easier to get this in first and then bend the bottom bit round. Sometimes works that way. See if we can just get the screwdriver in there and just pop that around the front. Come on, there we go. Now, always make sure you hammer this thing all the way home. Make sure it's properly in there, it's not poking out or anything. That's good. And you always have to make sure that this bar goes behind these two bits here. Always, never on top. If it's on top, it's not fitted right, so it has to go underneath. That's it now. We can uh, pump up the brakes, put the wheel back on, and that is how you change the front brakes on one of these old Volvo V70s, I think it is. Oh my goodness. Did I almost forget to talk down the back? 100 Newton meters. Now we put the wheel back on.